Chief Astronomer at the Franklin Institute in Philadelphia, Derek Pitts, joins us now from Philadelphia. So, Derek, can you first of all explain what makes a full moon a supermoon? Well, Elaine, what makes a full moon a supermoon is when two things happen. It's when the full moon coincides with what's called perigee. Perigee is the point in the moon's orbit when the moon is closest to Earth, and perigee can occur because a lunar orbit is not circular around the Earth, around the Earth but it's elliptical instead. So that means there are two significant points. One is perigee when it's close to Earth, another is apogee when the moon is farthest away from the Earth on its orbit. So when you get the full moon and the perigee to coincide, we have what's called a supermoon. The last time we had a supermoon this close was almost 70 years ago, and we won't have another one like it until 2034. So just explain that. It has to do with the orbit, yes? Yeah, sure. Well, what happens with the orbit is that the orbit itself precesses, if you will. So the orbit <laughs> rotates around the moon. And because the orbit rotates around the moon, that means that that very close perigee point can be at closer points and more distant points from Earth. So when that occurs, when we get these very, very close instances, we might call it a super, super moon. So in this particular instance, we have the closest of the super moons since 1948 and the closest before the next one comes in 2034, I believe it is. Mm -hmm. But we do have these perigee points every month, but when you have the two coincide of full moon and perigee, that can create the situation of supermoon. Now that in itself actually happens about once every 413 days. That's a little over a year, a month, and a few days. So that happens on a fairly regular basis. But when you have the instance where it's actually the closest of any of these, that's when we have these supermoons that are really most impressive. Uh, and Derek, we just saw David Begno's piece down there in Miami, in Miami Beach. What impact do supermoons actually have on Earth? Well, the actual major impact that the supermoons have on Earth is that they do create higher and lower tides. But you have to think of it in this way, actually, Elaine. You can't think of it in terms of the supermoon creating a super rush of water that's beyond anything else we've seen in the past, even though we think of it as a supermoon. But it, the uh, the small amount of water that it does add to an already encroaching waterfront in Florida just sort of enhances or emphasizes the critical situation for any low-lying areas as we're beginning to see uh, ocean levels rise anyway. So that extra amount of water certainly doesn't help. Uh, and fortunately, the supermoon comes rarely enough, or these large supermoons comes rarely enough, that we don't really have to look at it in terms of the moon itself adding, say, an extra foot or two feet of water it's adding, you know, an inch or two, maybe three inches to this uh, on top of what's already inundating these low-lying coastal areas. All right, lastly, Derek, when is the best time for people to go out and see this large supermoon? Well, the best time to go out, of course, to, to have seen the supermoon would have been last night. That would have been an easy time to view. The actual is instant was early this morning, but the moon had already set by then when all things were lining up exactly. So if you saw the moon last night, or if you're seeing the moon tonight, Elaine, you're seeing a really, really fine example of this. And we have to remember that the time that's typically given for this event is an instant. And the moon's motion, of course, is a smooth motion from one day to the next. So as long as we're in the zone of, say, a day on either side of full moon, then you're still seeing this super moon effect. And again, if you go out next month, you'll be able to sort of simulate the effect if you watch the full moon as it rises on the Earth's horizon. What you'll see is this very, very interesting optical illusion in which the moon appears to be incredibly large on the horizon. It's not actually that much larger than it is when you see it directly overhead, but because we're seeing it against objects or near objects of known size, that creates this optical illusion that makes the moon look really, really large when it sits on the horizon. All right, Derek Pitts, a lot of people looking to the heavens tonight. Thank you so much. Thank you, my pleasure.